There's a nearly universal concept in bariatric surgery now about using the bariatric surgical procedure actively as a tool to help achieve lower weight and better health. And I love this concept. I think this is a great idea to bring the patient on board as an active partner and an active participant, not just a passive recipient of what the surgery is doing to them. And using your surgery actively as a tool means many different things. One thing it means is choosing healthy foods and eating them in a healthy way in synchrony with your bariatric operation so that you have the best energy and the best satisfaction. It means taking the right vitamins. It means staying physically active. And using your tool also means remaining connected with your bariatric surgical team. All these things are important for long-term success. And the purpose of this video is to talk about a mindset that I'll call conscious eating that many people call mindful eating. This mindset that will help you do that first part about eating in a way that is healthy and works in synchrony with your surgery. Now conscious eating, I think it's very useful for two important reasons. One thing is that conscious eating is actually more comfortable. As I've discussed in other videos, you don't have to suffer to do well with your bariatric operation. And the second thing about conscious eating is that conscious eating is the type of eating that is going to give you long-term control over your hunger level and thus also long-term control over your weight and your health. And I think that when I talk to people five years and 20 years after their bariatric surgery, yes, the weight is a factor and yes, the health is a factor, but the sense of being in control and working with their body is also a very important factor that's not commonly mentioned and one that you have the best chance of achieving if you begin at the beginning. So let's start with conscious eating. I happen to believe that the principles of conscious eating that I'm going to discuss here are useful for non-bariatric people as well. I think that they give people a better sense of satisfaction, a better sense of being in control of their hunger. I'm not going to propose that conscious eating alone is going to help people lose 50 or 70 pounds without the help of bariatric surgery, but I do think it's a healthy lifestyle for everyone. In order to clarify what conscious eating is, let's talk for a moment about what conscious eating is not. The concept of conscious eating is not the same as what people usually think of when they think about being on a diet, of using willpower and personal discipline to control a person's intake in the face of hunger, um, in the face of pain, and um, this old-fashioned idea of reduced intake leads to reduced calories, while it's true on a mathematical level, it misses the fact that there's this automatic control system. And this is old idea is what I call the personal responsibility paradigm of weight loss, which I've discussed and in, in the sense debunked in multiple other videos. As I said, the accepted wisdom from society claims that weight control and dieting is a matter of personal choice. And as I said, these ideas have been debunked. And uh, the fact is that your weight is controlled by your biology to an overwhelming degree. The reality is that except for temporary periods of deprivation that we choose through dieting or maybe have imposed on us, we humans eat according to what our hunger drives tell us to do. This may sound fatalistic or sad in the sense that uh, it seems to mean that we are helpless in the face of our physical drives and we have no agency about our food choices. The good news is that with careful long-term conscious attention, we can modify or sort of like train our drives to a more like a healthy balance so that we can have a healthy hunger level that is easy to satisfy and easy to live with. In other words, it's unrealistic to use force of will to overcome your physical impulses on a long-term ongoing basis. On the other hand, it completely is realistic to train your body to mostly have sensible, healthy physical drives. Think of your body as a puppy after surgery. And um, think about this puppy being a puppy that will grow into a big, huge Labrador. And you need to train that puppy or it's going to be a mess when it turns into an 80-pound behemoth running around your house and chewing up the couch, etc. But Labradors are bright and your body is responsive as well so that if you use the right time interval and you work with your body and consciously train it into a healthy way, then it can be a wonderful companion to live with. Now, of course, for bariatric patients, the best time to train your mind and train your physical impulses is during what we call the honeymoon period, which is something like the first six months after surgery. Of course, it's possible to come back and retrain five years later on, but it's a lot harder. It's like training that adult Labrador, um, and you need to bring in the dog whisperer for that situation. And that's where your bariatric team can be helpful. 
In the next few minutes, we'll get to a lot of principles and processes that give you specific ideas about conscious eating. But there are three overarching principles that I think will capture the whole concept and point you in the right direction. The first of these is recognizing hunger or recognizing the absence of hunger, and it's an internal awareness. Now, I know that hunger is complicated, and that's a video that I'm due to work on, but for now we'll just say that you understand what hunger is and what hunger is not. The second key principle is choosing quality food. When we say quality food, we mean natural food, that's with minimal preservatives and no artificial sweeteners, and it means low carb. And the third key principle is a gentle eating process. So once you're eating because you're hungry, and you're eating quality food, we want you to eat in a way that is conscious and gentle and mindful. Now, I've gathered a number of specific thoughts or guidelines for this conscious eating process, and the conscious eating process should allow you to eat in a way that you can eat a small amount of food and feel satisfied and have good energy levels. And again, this works best for people that have had a gastric bypass or a sleeve, although it's probably a good idea for the general population as well. Um, the first principle and the overarching one, I think, is to be conscious and attentive with your entire food process. And when I say your entire food process, I mean um, you know, the shopping, or actually before that, the planning of the food that you're going to buy, um, the fact that you don't shop for some things that you shouldn't have on the shelf at your house or in the refrigerator at your house. Um, second, the preparation. I'm going to ask you to have your mind in the preparation piece so that you can, in a healthy way, anticipate and appreciate the food. Um, I'm going to ask, in particular, that you eat in a way that's mindful and attentive and cautious. We'll say more about that in a moment. And the cleanup piece. And um, Especially on the eating piece, if you don't have time to give your focus to that, and, and by the way, I want you to try to avoid multitasking. Try not to be on the phone and email and TV. Um, um, yes, you can eat socially, okay, and that, I don't really think of that as multitasking because social can actually deepen your mindful experience, but in terms of um, devices and, and information experiences, I would like you to keep those to a minimum um, in your eating process. If you don't have time to do that, um, it's, you probably don't need to eat right in that moment. And um, as I've said in other videos, I think it's okay to be hungry for a little while. Okay, number two. Try to only eat if you feel hungry. And I acknowledged a moment ago that hunger can be a little bit tricky. And I'm going to mention here that there's a different type of hunger that I call cravings. And cravings mean that uh, you have hunger that's distracting, that is anxiety provoking, that makes you hangry. And I use the word craving to mean um, a type of hunger that's not healthy. If you're having food uh, desire or food hunger that drives you crazy, then there's probably something out of balance and you should contact your bariatric team. But to the contrary, mostly when things are in a healthy balance, you should have hunger that makes you appreciate food more. And that's the right time to eat. And if you don't feel full, sorry, <laughs> if you don't feel hungry, then honestly I'm going to suggest to you that you can just take a pass on the food. Trust your body to let you know when it needs nutrition. And we think that this uh, idea or this concept of intentional fasting can be a really good idea, um, as we've discussed in our recent blog on our website here. Now moving a little bit into the quality of the food, we want you to choose food that is natural and solid. So talking about chicken or salad or beef. Um, and the solid foods are going to stay in your little stomach pouch for a little bit of a longer time and give you an earlier more genuine, lasting sense of satiety versus the mushy foods. And we don't want you to take even healthy soup and have soup be your food all the time because that liquid food will flow through your stomach a little more quickly than we would like. Um, and this is just like drinking with your food. So um, solid food, proteins or natural fats, and minimal carbs. Having said that we want you to choose solid foods that are natural and low carb, um, we also want you to choose foods that you are going to enjoy because I'm going to want you to dive in mentally to your meal and I want you to be able to appreciate what you're eating. And so this shouldn't be drudgery or difficulty. Um, you're not uh, eating just because you're supposed to or you have to, but I want you to eat because you're enjoying it and then be satisfied when you're finished. Well, I feel a little silly because I got into the middle of editing this video about a week after I shot it and I realized I had left out a couple of key points. 
So on the subject of food enjoyment, I want to emphasize that we're really fine with you spicing your food all that you like to do. I think actually adding spice to your food helps with the conscious aspect of food planning. Um, it helps with the enjoyment of the food and then it gives you some uh, variation that makes your food plan sustainable over the long run. And I mentioned it briefly but I want to expand on the idea that natural fats are okay as part of a healthy food plan. I'm talking about olive oil, um, avocado, dairy fats, and things like this. Um, and, and yes, we love proteins and we love green vegetables for you. Those things are still part of the mix. Uh, but we want you to have a variety of foods available for you in the long run so that it's, again, a sustainable food plan. And um, natural fats turn out to be fairly satisfying, so you don't have to eat a huge amount. Um, and they do add flavor and taste and variety to your food in the long run. And along those lines, we really don't like artificial sweeteners. Now, everyone understands that uh, we want to stay away from sugars and sweets and, and simple carbs, um, but artificial sweeteners turn out also to be a problem in terms of food quality. Um, and the different artificial sweeteners have different effects. There's still research that's happening, uh, but artificial sweeteners diminish the quality of your food or decrease the quality of your food in the sense that they stimulate hunger, they stimulate appetite, um, or they disrupt metabolism. So uh, we're looking for a food plan that doesn't have a lot of sweet flavor, whether that be a real sweet flavor or a fake sweet flavor. And food quality matters as part of your conscious eating program because food is not just calories that you take in, but food is also hormonally active in your body. So good quality food is going to give you a lasting sense of satisfaction and is going to give you a good energy level. On the other hand, poor quality food, which is going to be artificial food or uh, carb-related food, uh, poor quality food is going to give you um, a temporary sense of fullness and, and actually a sense of hunger that comes up again pretty quickly. And poor quality food is going to diminish your energy in the long run, even if it might give you just a temporary energy spike. Take a moment before you actually start eating and give yourself some brisk hydration. So this would be a step that comes in between the food preparation piece. You sit down and I want you to drink a good amount of water, whether that's a cup or two cups, and to drink it pretty briskly. And this is going to have two potential benefits for you. First of all, hydration is always a good thing. And as you know, we don't want you to drink with your food. We don't want you to drink for a little while after your food. Um, so hydration is going to be assisted by drinking as a preliminary to food. But also, if you drink briskly over a minute or two, then you're going to give your little stomach pouch a gentle pre-stretch that's actually beneficial. And so what this can do is it can take the edge off of your hunger so that you don't feel this sort of urgency to the hunger and you feel in control as you pick up the fork and move into your next bite of food. Stop and give thanks. Just think for a second about how you got to this point. Think about this food, where it came from, and um, give gratitude to the world for this. I think this is a good way of stepping back, taking a breath, and making sure that your next points of eating uh, are appropriately attentive. Then, once you pick up the fork and take that first bite of food, no more drinking, please, and no more drinking for an hour after you eat. And so what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to chew your food and to swallow it without any extra lubrication or flushing. And um, this is completely doable, but it takes more time, takes more chewing, and you have to chew it a little bit more thoroughly before you swallow it down. And guess what? For conscious eating, those are all good things. And then the other thing about this process, of course, as I mentioned, is that not chasing your food with fluid means that you allow that food to sit in your little stomach pouch for a longer and actually a more beneficial time and give you a lasting sense of satisfaction or what we call satiety. With some practice, you will learn what the right portion size is for you to gain satisfaction. And this varies a lot, so I'm not going to say a lot about what the right portion size is. But again, your goal is that you should be eating because you feel hungry. And you should eat enough to get to the level of satisfaction without getting to the level of feeling full or bloated. And because um, full and bloated is really too much and satisfaction should give you good energy and a good sense of well-being. Now, a tricky part of it is that the nerves that notice satisfaction and notice a healthy appropriate level of stomach fullness, those nerves are kind of slow. So here's another guideline is I want you to try to make your small meal take at least 20 minutes to eat. And then really not longer than 30 minutes because the other food pattern that we don't want to go into is nibbling or snacking or grazing or really long eating because it is a fact that your little stomach is starting to empty out even as you're continuing that meal.
And with each bite, to the best of your ability, ask yourself, okay, what's my hunger level right now? And try to practice getting yourself a hunger uh, measurement scale from one through five. Um, if you're at a hunger level of one, very low, um, then you really don't need to be eating. Um, and if you're a hunger level of five, that's crazy hunger, um, that probably means you took a little too long to eat. And so I would say the ideal hunger scale is to begin eating when you're probably at kind of like a four. That's you know kind of moderate hunger, but not intense hunger. And then to stop eating when you're down at a two, which is when you're satisfied, but not really super full. Now I asked you to notice whether you feel hungry or not and to stop eating when you feel satisfied and I want to emphasize this point and it can be tricky because your hunger level or your satisfaction level can be different on different days. And um, you may find that you're eating a normal portion for you and you're halfway through and your hunger is gone. So be it. And I'm aware that your mom may have made you clean your plate when you were younger and talked about starving children wherever they were living. Um, but that's not your situation right now. And if your hunger is taken care of, set that aside, store it or toss it, whatever your preference may be. Now the cool thing about this, if you practice it regularly, is that if you eat just up until satisfied, on average your meals are going to be much smaller. And the other cool thing is that you can actually reset your stomach pouch or your stomach pouch tolerance to act smaller than it was. All over the internet you'll hear about pouch reset and sometimes that means people want to have more surgery. Most often surgery isn't all that useful. But um, a pouch reset can be real when it's a habit reset and when it's working with your body sensations to accustom your stomach pouch to having a smaller amount and reaching that level, level of satisfaction rather than that level of super fullness. And then the last part of the eating process, and this may run in parallel with your cleanup process, is to reassess. How did that work for me? Do I feel satisfied? What's my energy level? Because quality food in the right amount should give you satisfaction and lasting energy. If you have a problem with being hungry again very soon after you eat, or if you feel your energy is wavering, you know, it may go up and it may go down um, after you eat, then there's something about that food process or that food quality that's not working, and we may need to bring in the bariatric team, which is fine, we're happy to help troubleshoot that. Last of all, I just gave you a very complex, lengthy set of guidelines, and the last of these is I want you to give yourself some grace. No one is going to get this right at first, and I don't think anyone is going to be perfect with this on a week-by-week -week or a month-by-month -month basis. So do the best you can, and the more effort you put into it, the more payoff you're going to have, even if you don't reach that level of true perfection. So my goal for you is to use these conscious or mindful eating processes to take control of the part of your biology that you realistically can control. Realistically, you can have sensible healthy hunger that's reasonably easy to satisfy with a small amount of regular food. Realistically, you can have stable reduced weight that lasts for decades and decades. Realistically, you can feel a significant degree of awareness and control of your inner body processes, especially as it relates to hunger and appetite. Let me wind up by circling back to more of a philosophical point than a particular guideline. Um, as part of your plan for uh, conscious, sustainable, um, lifetime weight control and health improvement, um, I hope you'll approach this with an attitude of grace and self-acceptance. And I'm kind of talking about your weight goals. I think that um, having the health, the longevity, the sense of control, those are completely within reach. Um, many people will achieve an outstanding weight goal. Not everyone will. Um, and as I've said in other videos, it is not our goal for anyone, really, to get down to this reference point that's the so-called ideal body weight that drives so many bariatric patients crazy. Um, there is also a weight level that I call the best weight or the fairy godmother weight, you know, if we could rate weight wave our, our wand um, that everyone would get to and not everyone makes that either. Um, contrary to what social media would have you believe, not everyone is destined to be a bikini model on the cover of Sports Illustrated and biology does limit us to some degree. And this shows up in different ways. Uh, people who have met me know that I'm very vertically challenged. I'm not due to be a center playing for the Boston Celtics and I'm okay with that. That's my biology and so I work with what my biology gives me. And I want you to work with what your biology gives you as well. So this whole process is about working in partnership with your body and your physical sensations, recognizing that your biology has a lot to say about what's achievable and sustainable. What should be achievable and sustainable is losing weight, being healthy, having less prescriptions, 
shopping in the normal clothes sections, and being your real self in the world. So let's get started. 